Hi folks, I'm backstage at Symphony Hall again, an intermission of a concert, answering a question, responding to a specific question about upper register and how you develop a good upper register on the bass trombone. There's a couple things that it's important to understand. First of all is that with my background as a tenor trombonist, tenor trombonists are always spending time in the upper register. And it's not uncommon to find tenor trombonists with a great upper register, but with a fair to so-so low register. And that happens because those players, it's very easy to put priority on the upper register and not really spend any time in the low register. And it's really a matter of technique and figuring it out. On bass trombone, it's exactly the same except in reverse. So oftentimes there are great bass trombonists with really great low registers, but that have some issues with the upper register. And it's because we wind up not putting the kind of emphasis on it that we really ought to. And that's the first thing is realizing that it's an important part of what we do. Um, you probably consider that 95% of the notes that we play in the orchestra are from the E below the bass clef staff on up. And probably at least half of them to three quarters of them are from middle F on up. So there's an awful lot that we have to play in that register and it's really important to have it when you need it. Better to need, have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So the first thing is prioritizing. The second thing is how we approach it. Now in terms of approach, just like when we go into the low register, we have to allow our air to relax. We have to open up. In the upper register, the mistake that a lot of bass trombonists make, and even tenor trombonists, is to try to think in a way too relaxed. And yes, our upper register absolutely needs to be relaxed, but if we focus on that term or that idea, relaxed, you can take it too far and mean that there's an inactivity or that I should be passive when I approach the upper register. And that's not what you can do. It's, it's really not the way to go about it. And so what we have to do is we have to allow the airstream to get much smaller and more compact. And the other thing is just specifically, um, one of the ways I like to visualize things is if you imagine the upper register sort of like the way it works the way our embouchures work the way a piano does. That is, you go higher on a piano, the strings get shorter and they get thinner. Just like our apertures, we go higher on the aperture, or higher in the register, the aperture gets smaller and it gets narrower. But what can happen as we go to the very highest point is that our aperture can go from being round like this to being almond shaped like this, which does two things. It shortens the amplitude top to bottom, as you can see, and it widens the amount that we vibrate from left to right. And so it actually, it's like trying to use a longer, thicker piano string for an upper register note. And what I do to combat that is I really engage these muscles down here in my embouchure to keep my embouchure from doing this and get into more this kind of idea. Mm. And you might say, well, isn't that going to shut down the airstream? Well, actually, quite the contrary. If taken to the absolute extreme, yes, it can shut down the, uh, the airstream. But let me show you. I'm going to play a high B flat. And this B flat, I'm going to play with my um, sort of in a disengaged way. And you'll get, you'll hear, big, wide, diffuse sound, which that's relaxed but disengaged. And if I think of being engaged and engage these muscles to allow that airstream to condense down, it's all a matter of bringing the airstream in. That's all we're trying to do. But it requires a certain amount of um, musculature and shaping of the aperture to do that. Shaping of our embouchure to bring the airstream in. Now we wind up from this. So I can take that note and, and do it and you'll hear the change. Did you hear how it developed core? Developed a better quality, a better core. And we can take that and once we have that core, We can apply it to any note above there. Now the reality is, as I start getting above D, uh, even to D and above, my armature naturally starts to pull back some. And so for me, it's a constant battle to bring my my uh, lower part of my armature in and forward so I can keep that aperture round. That's really key for me for the upper register. And I can do all that and have my shoulders be relaxed, have my chest be relaxed, and have my arms be relaxed, that relaxation is important, absolutely, and I don't want to be misunderstood. But 
it's equally important to engage here what we need and the reality is that there's a certain amount of engagement down here with our abdominal muscles because when we add resistance we wind up it's just harder to push the air through when you make the air stream smaller it's harder to push the air through and it requires a different kind of flow and yes it requires you to flex your muscles a little bit to push that air out through an opening where the air doesn't really want to go um, so it's really that simple to practice on your own just really just try playing an F above the staff as loud as you can you're not gonna hurt yourself if you do it isolated just play one F if you get edge and you get buzz and you get vibration that's good because it means that your embouchure is working efficiently you don't want to lose that brilliance you just want to scale it back so that there's a balance of brilliance and breadth and depth. That's what you're after in the upper register.